Hey everybody, welcome Ecosystem Pond Series video number two. You know, there are all of these pollutants that attack your pond all of the time and they cause issues with water quality. This whole water quality thing in science is called the nitrogen cycle. If you really don't understand that, I'll put a link to another short video up there explaining it. We're not going to talk about that today, but today begins our saga in the battle against these pollutants and understanding how to maintain water quality. Today we're going to talk about mechanical filtration. So my friends, here's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn what mechanical filtration is. You're going to learn why mechanical filtration is important to your ecosystem pond. You're going to see some actual examples of the mechanical filtration that we're speaking of. And I'm going to take you out, give you some hands-on experience with doing maintenance and what that looks like. Anyways, I'll get to that later. That's the cool stuff. Stay tuned and do me a favor, pay attention. You might learn something, I'm just saying. So you're probably asking yourself right now, self, what is a mechanical filter? Actually, you're probably not, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna say that you are. And the truth of the matter is the mechanical filter, I don't care what kind of mechanical filter you have on your pond, it's a sweeper. Its job is to collect the solids and the junk so that you can physically or mechanically remove them. It is the place where you do your work. That's what it is. Simple as that. It prepares your pond water for your biological filter by capturing all of the large chunks and sediments and leaves and fish poo and all of the other junk that washes in, blows in, whatever into your pond, the stuff that's trying to destroy your water quality, this filter catches it so that you can get in there and grub it out, get it out of your pond. And the reason that it's important is because by capturing and removing these solids out of your pond water, guys, your filter doesn't have to handle that additional organic load. Remember, we are always trying to recreate mother nature on our own terms. And we put way more fish in a tiny little space. And we do all of these things that don't happen that way in nature. So we have to enhance the filtration capacity of our feature. The first part, the important part, is your mechanical filter. Let's cruise on over here. I wanna show you some different styles of mechanical filtration and tell you about what they are and how they work and all that stuff, let's go. Well, alrighty then. My, the sun is bright, holy cow, all right. So uh, yeah, the lighting in my uh, outdoor professional studio is a little bit iffy sometimes because it's called the sun and this is my back porch. So anyhow, mechanical filtration. Let's think about this. Let's start small. So uh, number one, if you have a small pond or a tub style pond, anything that is really too tiny for a skimmer box, you're gonna use a submersible pump. And a submersible pump is either designed that looks like this with the pump inside of it, and then it's a mechanical filter because you have to pull it out of the pond, scrape the goo off of it, or you have another type of submersible pump, maybe like this guy right here, and you can use this right here, which is a submersible pond filter. It actually has some biological media that goes inside of it as well, but this guy can actually just be set into the bottom of the pond, and what you do is you take your pump apart, and all of this stuff, by the way, has a rating for a flow rate. Make sure when you use a pump and a filter system that you match the pump flow rate with the filter system flow rate because stuff doesn't work properly if you skip that part. You have to read the instructions, kids, I'm just saying. So you can take your pump apart anyways. This particular pump right here, you have threads on the outside of the intake. If you take this housing off, this pump is not designed to be put into the bottom of the pond, but you could take hose and run it from this portion of your submersible pond filter and adapt it to these fittings right here. And effectively, your pump is pulling water that has had the solids pulled out by this unit into the pump and sending it to your biological filter. You have achieved mechanical filtration with this dealio right here. This guy can be on a piece of flexible pipe. So when it comes time for you to do your job, your maintenance, on this submersible pond filter is to pull it up out of the pond, clean all the crud off of it. I'm gonna tell you a thousand times, don't spray it with hose water. Anytime you clean filter media, 
with hose water, you sanitize it. If it's chlorinated water, at least if you're in the city, which most of the people we work for have city water, it's got chlorine, chloramines, all this other stuff they put in there to keep us healthy, right? So that stuff will sanitize your filter. But it doesn't matter, you keep cleaning that mechanical filter often. So by cleaning the outside of this, you're good. Don't sanitize the media that's inside of this unit. Okay, so that shows you how you can work on a small scale. Now, if you scoot right over here, you've got a couple of skimmer boxes. So guys, there's like 5,000 types of skimmers out here. I've told you before, aquascapes is my thing. Whatever type of skimmer you're using, I want to talk about the things that are important to me about a skimmer. A nice lid to cover it up. Um, I'll just tell you the truth. This is the medium sized skimmer and the large skimmer from aquascapes. I only use this skimmer. This is a price point for a smaller feature. If we build a small pond, I still use the Signature Series 1000 skimmer because of its large size. It has room in here. I can do all the stuff I need to do. Look at the basket size. This mechanically collects large sticks, debris, leaves, whatnot. There's your mechanical filter. And if I can get this guy apart, you can see the difference in the basket size of these two guys. So for me, for doing all the work to build the pond, it just only makes sense for me to use the large skimmer box. You guys do whatever you think. There's a gajillion types of skimmers out there. This is a great mechanical filter. Another important thing for me to tell you is, don't go jerry-rigging all kinds of different pieces together. It's important that your water has to flow through this mechanical filter. If you cut, if you do a poor job with your filter pad and the water can go around it, the water will go around it. It will take the path of least resistance. This stuff all works together. There's a check valve that works with it. The basket fits with it. The pumps fit with it. This mechanical filter tightens everything up on the inside so that the water comes in. It goes through this basket. That catches the big stuff where I can physically remove it. It then flows down through the filter pad, which I can pull out and clean. I'm not worried about sanitizing that. And then it gets to the pump. The the mechanical filter portion of your job or of your, of your pond has done its job marvelously because you now have water that is nutrient rich and highly oxygenated. It's had all the junk moved out of it and it's ready to pump its way up into the biological filter where your filter can actually do its work. That's the next video. We'll talk about biological filtration. Hey, I want to talk to you about the filter pads too because this is another thing that happens is you you end up with different style filters. You end up with different style of filter pads. So, you know, the, the thing to know is that the, the larger the openings are, this is a more porous pad, the larger debris that can get through. It doesn't clog as quickly as something that's more dense like this white filter pad. So as far as your mechanical filter goes, you've got a pre-filter. We've got other filter pads that we use when we put a flocculant in a pond, which basically is a water clarifier. It clumps stuff together. They are super fine, way more dense than this. And I'm telling you that it's gonna affect your maintenance. So when you select a filter pad, two things to know. The denser it is, the more often you're gonna have to clean it. The more porous it is, the more debris it's going to allow to go into your biological filter. So you want to consider that based on what you choose in biological filtration as to what filter you want to put in your mechanical filter. And also, are you going to clean it? Because I tell you right now, my clients I, all the time, some of them clean it every day. Some of them I don't think have ever cleaned it. So it's really truthfully, you know, your style of maintenance and how much effort you're going to put into your water feature is going to depend on which one of these guys is going to work best for you. you. Get back to what I was talking about. Sorry, just thought I'd do a little filter pad chat. Now guys, there's some other types of mechanical filters. If you're working with the swim pond, you're going to have external pumps and you have baskets on those pumps that catch debris as they go through. Those are mechanical filters. If you have an intake bay on a pond instead of a skimmer system, it's a mechanical filter. It collects garbage in the intake your job to vacuum the garbage out of the intake. It's all a different way. The larger your mechanical filter is, the more debris it can handle. It's gotta be sized properly for your water feature, but your understanding now 
the purpose of your mechanical filter, the different styles, how they're gonna work. I'm thinking I'm just gonna make another video about doing skimmer maintenance because odds are if you've got one of our water features, you've either got an intake bay, a negative edge, or a skimmer box. 90% of the time, it's a skimmer box. I'm gonna make you another video to show you how we do maintenance on a skimmer, how we add our bacteria properly so that our filtration works perfectly for us. I'm gonna zip over to, a, to another house and do that. I'll put a link to that video right up there, guys. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me if you're learning anything. Tell me if you're bored to death. And stay tuned for the next portion of our Ecosystem Pond series because that's gonna be about biological filters and I'm gonna show you some really cool stuff that we do with Biofalls in order to maximize the effectiveness and the ease of maintenance. We do some good stuff. Guys, stay tuned. I appreciate you watching. Have a great day. I'm out.